There was part of me that was worried that because of buyer's agent now have a contract signed for before showing a property that a lot of the buyers would go direct to the listing agent. Once I listed that property in the domain, it was the weekend right after the settlement happened. The majority of the people coming through the open house were represented by an agent. Some were just looking, of course. And then the offers that did come in, 100% of them were from buyer's agents. Edwin Balloy here at MidriseLiving.com, giving you your condo report for Anaheim and the city of Irvine. Okay, we'll go in a little in depth as we're approaching the fourth quarter of 2024. If you haven't already, look at my predictions that I had for 2024. Some of them came true, some of them have yet to come true, or you can see I was just dead wrong. Let's look at the city of Irvine first. I'm going. I'm going to talk about what things have stayed the same and one or two big changes that have happened. It's taking about the same amount to sell a condo in the city of Irvine. We went from 20 days on the market to now it's 21 days. So not much of a change there, which is a big surprise because our inventory has almost doubled in terms of the amount of condos. For August of 2024, it was 273 townhomes and condos that were for sale in the city of Irvine. And then in 2023, we had 146. That's, that's a difference of 87%. And one, one area that it's also impacted with, with that uptick in inventory, even though or it's still taking the, about the same amount of time to sell, you have the sold to list price. So if something is listed at this price, what's the percent that it ends up selling at? Same time last year, it sold for about 101.3% of the list price. This year, it's actually slightly below. Uh, so for month of August, it was 99.4%. So the bidding wars aren't quite as aggressive as they used to be. But good news for sellers is that the average sales price has gone up from 1.2 to all the way to 1.33. Or then that's for condos and townhomes. We're not even talking about single family homes in the city of Irvine. Uh, that, that's, that's really just skyrocketed up. What else is this telling us? The activity levels in terms of the amount of closed sales has stayed relatively the same. So we're entering what our third year here of, of very low inventory and higher interest rates. So the rates have come down that the activity is still staying very low. That means that a lot of sellers and buyers are still on the sidelines, hoping that the interest rates will go down. And keep in mind that was historically low activity level in terms of sales since the 1990s and remember in, in 1999 98 we didn't even have the amount of homes out that we have in southern california so for our, our activity to be that low you know about 25 26 years ago kind of tells you just how suppressed the market has been not a good sign for real estate agents and loan officers who are looking who are looking to make a living off of this but then good news for sellers if you're cashing out not so good news for a seller if you're having to buy a replacement property, however. You're, you're seeing the good end of it and, and getting a high sales price, but then you're gonna have to pay a premium as well, especially if you're going to go into a single family home. Just about everything is a, a bidding war there. Now let's talk about the city of Anaheim. The things that have stayed the same are the amount of sales again, just like just like the city of Irvine. Uh, days on market, it's come up a little bit, uh, but not, Nothing alarming. It used to take 21 days on average to sell a condo or townhome in the city of Anaheim back in August, 2023. Now it's taking 25 days. So about 20% higher. The inventory's come up 30%. Last year, same time, there were 139 condos that were for sale in the city of Anaheim. And then now there's 180 of townhomes and condos. That brings us into what we call two months of supply. Technically, that is still a seller's market. In fact, that, that's still a very hard seller's market. But then on my own listings, a couple of years ago, I, I'd get as many as 15 offers on a condo or townhome in the same complex. Uh, like I'll give, I'll throw out the domain of Anaheim, listed a three bedroom about three weeks ago, and we got three offers on that. You know, so the same one that would have gotten 10 offers is now getting three offers, but the price, it, it's slightly higher. 
it's tough for the seller who's going to be trying to get into a replacement property, but then for the seller who's cashing out or moving out of state, they're the winners in this game. Let's talk a little about the NAR settlement. I know the news outlets are really trying to predict doom and gloom for real estate agents and then the industry making a drastic shift to where you know, some were hoping that we get paid nothing at, at the end of the day. But then the, the keys were supposed to turn on to a different kind of real estate market or a different kind of industry in, in mid-September. So I launched a listing shortly after those, those changes took place. And there was part of me that was worried that because of buyer's agents, I have to have, to have a contract signed for, before showing a property that a lot of the buyers would go direct to the listing agent. Keep in mind that that option was always there the whole time, even pre-NAR settlement. Any buyer could go to any listing agent and the reality is, that at least in our, our market, the majority of people would hire buyer's agents uh, simply because of efficiency and to have someone bargaining on their side. And then maybe you might have one or two that go to, go to the listing agent, but then every time that was usually the person who's, who's willing to pay the least for the property. So if you had a place listed at 800,000 and there was a bidding war that got all the, up, up to 825, I was usually getting a phone call saying that if I go direct to you, can I pay 775? It's like, no, I, I work for the seller at the end of the day. I'm, I'm trying to get them the most money. So then once I listed that property in the domain, it was the weekend right after the settlement happened. I had zero buyers come up to me and ask me that question. The majority of the people coming through the open house were represented by an agent. Some were just looking, of course. And then the offers that did come in, 100% of them were from buyer's agents. So that kind of gives you an idea. We're going to have to wait and see how it, how it turns out. But then what I'm hearing from my colleagues, from the office meetings, and just through the grapevine is there really hasn't been much of a change. You know, you don't have a, a slew of buyers, you know, knocking on our door as a listing agent asking to go directly with us. Buyer's agency seems like it's here to stay and it, because uh, quite frankly, it provides value. Again, I'm Edwin Valloy at midriseliving.com. Go to my website to get the latest market reports, the value of your condo, and also the latest listings.